here because the outside world rejects you. After the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles rights were sold in 2009, one of the first things to come out after the sale in regards to the Turtles was the IDW Comics version of the Ninja Turtles. These versions of the Turtles debuted way back in 2011, so that was even before the 3D animated television show. This comics version of the Turtle is still the main run that's going on and has spanned over 120 issues. And I always thought the origins of these Turtles was very fascinating. It's actually a very dark story. There's really nothing else like it in any other version of the TMNT. It's very interesting how all of it unfolded, how the turtles came to be. Their history in this version is dark, sad, and transcends time, believe it or not. Today, we're gonna take a look at it in detail. For those who have never experienced this iteration of the turtles, I think you're gonna be really taken back on how this went down and where these turtles came from. And for those who already know how this happened, I hope you enjoyed this trip down memory lane and maybe catch some new things that you didn't catch originally. Make sure to let me know down below in the comments what you thought of the beginning of these turtles as a story. But let's waste no more time time and discuss the dark tragic origins of the IDW Ninja Turtles. For those who have never read this version of the Turtles, you might be thinking, how different could this be? They were probably regular Turtles, then something transformed them into the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And the answer is yes and no. Truth is, before these Turtles came to be, they lived a previous life as humans. Hundreds of years ago in feudal Japan, you can see that there was a man named Hamato Yoshi, and he was a member of the Foot Clan, who was led by a man named Oroku Saki. At first the two were clan brothers, but Saki went down a dark path, ruling with an iron fist. At one point you can see him ordering entire villages to be killed. This was when Yoshi had had enough, and disagreed with Saki in front of the rest of the Foot Clan. Yoshi left, not wanting to be party to this disgrace that Saki was bringing to the clan, but this made him an outcast cast, and it also enraged Saki. And unfortunately, this was the catalyst to the tragic events that followed. We see that Yoshi had a beautiful wife named Tang Shen, and four young boys, each with what looked like his own favorite color, blue, orange, red, and purple. One evening, you could see that she was putting her sons to bed. Yoshi was not home yet, but unbeknownst to her, Oroku Saki had ordered their family to be killed as payback for Yoshi leaving the clan. The Foot Clan began to surround their house. They broke in and killed Tengshin and then drew their attention to the boys. This is when Hamato Yoshi arrived, furious at what was happening. Yoshi brutally killed the assassins and then tended to his dying wife. The boys could then be seen waking up from their sleep, confused at what had happened. Tang Shen looked at them as she laid there dying, and with her final words begged Yoshi not to seek vengeance, to flee with the boys far away and to keep them safe. This is when she took her last breath and died in Yoshi's arms. Yoshi then quickly gathered his sons and fled, leaving behind his dead wife and vanishing into the mountains. This part was very sad seeing the boys cling on to their father, not knowing what was going on, in fear as they were running away. But the next part is what I believe is the most tragic event of the whole series. Yoshi and his boys now lived in the mountains, secluded, away from everyone. For a while they are safe, and life slowly got better. You could see the passage of time now, as the boys looked visibly older. They also appeared to receive their own individual weapons, katana, sai, bow staff, and nunchucks. One day their father brought home some food, and some sweets as well, which was rare for them, being out there on their own the way they were. Little did they know though, that this would be the last moment that they shared together. Yoshi looks visibly older in these parts, and you gotta think maybe in his old age he started slipping and possibly made a mistake, which allowed him to be followed home. Because as his kids are enjoying the food, they are suddenly surrounded by the Foot Clan and Oroku Saki, who now appeared to don his Shredder armor. Shredder ordered the Hamatos to be tied up and placed on their knees. He had Yoshi facing his four young sons as they weeped in fear. Except for the blue one who tried to stay strong for his family, Shredder told Yoshi to look at his sons, and to think how he had dragged them into his betrayal of the Foot Clan, it was over. All Yoshi could do at this point was look down and pray to the powers of the universe for justice to one day be reunited with his sons, and to be able to face Oroku Saki, warrior to warrior. Yoshi's final words to his sons were, forgive me, and then the unthinkable happened. Shredder ordered his soldiers to behead the four boys. All Yoshi could do 
was helplessly watch. Yoshi then looked up at the Shredder and said, Know this, when we meet again, I will destroy you. But Shredder replied, We will never meet again, as he swung his sword down, beheading Hamato Yoshi. Now I told you guys, these origins are no joke, but that's just half the story. I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, how did they become the Ninja Turtles then? Let's talk about that. So centuries passed and time went on, and in the present we see there are four regular turtles and a rat at a laboratory, part of a study. Also in this laboratory, Baxter Stockman is working on a mutagen for a mysterious figure named General Crane. You see that the rat, Splinter, has already been given a name by the staff there, but April, who works at the lab, gets to name the turtles. She says she's currently enrolled for a semester of Renaissance art, and so she explains that the one standing still and quiet will be named Leonardo, and the one studying that bug, as she describes it, is Donatello, and the one goring himself on lettuce is Michelangelo. Then someone asks about the fourth one, and she says, oh, the feisty one? That's Raphael. And so that's how in this version they got their names. Now you find out that the Foot Clan is still around, and now in New York, one night they break into this laboratory to steal the ooze and some specimens. Splinter sees what's happening and chases after them to try to save the turtles, as they are the specimens that they took. He jumps at one of the ninja's faces and scratches it and bites it, causing the foot soldier to drop the bag that the turtles and the ooze are in. Then he threw Splinter to the floor as well. Now the turtles and the rat laid in the ooze helplessly. At one point during all this, Raphael is separated from the group and is lost, and at the same time the Foot Clan return to get what they dropped. Splinter is forced with a decision, and chooses to save the other three turtles by pulling them down into a storm drain, unfortunately leaving Raphael lost up above. What seems like almost immediately in that same day down in the sewers, Splinter mutates into an older, humanoid rat, and the turtles turn into teenage humanoid turtles. Right there and then, the ability to speak seems to come to them, with the turtles' first words appearing to be turtles. Right away from their mutation, they all seem to be high-functioning, almost as if they had picked up right where they left off those hundreds of years ago when they were executed in Japan. So for those who haven't got it yet who may be confused, it does appear that the universe, or the powers that be, must have granted Hamato Yoshi his final prayers, as Yoshi now had in fact been reunited with his sons. They had been reincarnated. Although at least at first their memory is not all there, Splinter seems to remember more than the rest of the family, with Leonardo getting flashbacks from time to time. But without much more to go off of, the Turtles mostly just take Splinter's word for it at the start. Now to honor their missing brother, Splinter has the Turtles wear red bandanas, as it was his favorite color in their past life. So even though for a different reason, just like the original Mirage comics from back in the 80s, these guys also started in all red. Also, Leo, Mikey, and Don can immediately be seen in some of their early fights with local criminals using the same weapons they used as humans in the past, which is the traditional Ninja Turtles weapons. For a while, the three turtles look for their lost brother Raphael. Donatello at one point questions if he even exists. He has the hardest time buying this whole reincarnation thing, especially at the beginning. But like I mentioned before, everyone's memory is kind of hazy. Anyways, this causes tension between the brothers. Leo and Donnie have it out pretty good regarding the matter, though eventually on one of these nights looking for Raphael, they do end up finding him. Just as he's about to be killed fighting in a park, the turtles save him and see that their brother has memory loss that's worse than theirs. Though, due to them all having similar appearances and the brotherly love that they show him, Raphael ends up trusting his instincts and goes home with them. Back at home, Splinter comes to tears as Raphael is finally reunited with them. Soon after, the turtles begin training, now all four together. One day, Splinter has a talk with his sons, explains that they wore red bandanas to serve as a constant reminder of their brother Raphael, who at the time they were urgently looking for but that now that they're all reunited, it was time to display their true selves. He handed Michelangelo an orange mask, Donatello a purple one, and Leonardo blue. Finally, he reached down into the bag and pulled out a pair of sai and handed them to Raphael. And with that, we now had the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Alright everyone, so that's it. That's how the IDW Ninja Turtles became the Ninja Turtles. In my opinion, I love this origin. I love how tragic it is and how it's filled with such despair at the beginning. It makes when they eventually face the Shredder that much more impactful. I've always wondered why they never adapted the IDW Turtles into like an animated series. There's so many story arcs that they've had since they started. I feel like if they adapted each one into a season, they'd have like 10 seasons on their hands. Such a good roadmap already laid out story-wise. But anyways, let me know down below what did you think of the IDW Ninja Turtles origin 
origin. Also, if you're new, remember to hit subscribe if you want more content like this in your life. Remember to follow on all the social media platforms. The links are down below in the description. Thanks everybody once again for watching. I will see you in a little bit with another one. Take care. Armed.